is that heroin is not widely available in Brazil. Apparently, it's it's too expensive, and so most of the, mm -hmm. his treatments have been with people for crack cocaine, which I know is the inverse of what you normally find in North America. And so I'm I'm pretty anxious to see what uh, what effects ibogaine has had on that particular population. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, let Let's go ahead and invite uh, the doctor on. Uh, Dr. Bruno, are you on with us? Um, hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Welcome. Hello. Uh, first, I want to, to thank you for the, the invitation. Thank you, Peter, Damon, and, and uh, Rich, and all the people related to Ibo Radio, and congratulations for, for this work. Well, thank you for coming on. Okay. So, uh, let's just begin at the beginning. How did you find out about Ibo again? Yes, I, I find about ibogaine when I first had a, a relative of mine that needed treatment for cocaine using, and I heard about ibogaine, and after uh, looking all the, the world, I find a, a clinic in Panama who, where they were doing treatments, and I was there with my, my cousin, and he treated there, and he had a very good uh, response to the treatment. Uh, it mm -hmm. was in 1994. After that, uh, although I am a, a clinical doctor, I, I, my work is with internal medicine and gastroenterology, I began, began to uh, be interested in, in ibogaine, and I began to do some treatments here. And uh, I was impressed with the the outcoming of these patients because they mm -hmm. really, uh, uh, 24 hours after the the doses, they they don't want, they have no no crave, cravings anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed for a, a few years, four, five, six years, treating one patient here or another patient there. After that, I. Uh, I have uh, known a, a psychologist here in Brazil, and she she's uh, a very a very uh, good professional, and she was very interested in ibogaine. So we started doing treatments with pre-treatment uh, preparation, mm -hmm. the treatment itself, and and uh, the following up of these patients, and we noticed that. This the, the the preparation and the following up after the, the application, we noticed that this uh, really worked very very well and uh, better than the only the, the ibogaine itself, hmm. and we started to to treat uh, more patients and now we have about 170 patients treated, and and the most of the patients are doing well. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and what you said, uh, Peter, is true. Here in Brazil, we don't have heroin addicts. Uh, we uh, heroin is too much expensive for the patterns of consumption uh, here in Brazil. So people use mostly crack cocaine, and there's a lot of crack cocaine users in Brazil. Mm. Uh, we hope that someday we could treat. Uh, more openly because now, as you said too, ibogaine is not regulated here, so it's not illegal to do the treatments, but it's not uh, exactly what the government uh, wants uh, us to do. <laughs> right, so right, we, right, right. We contacted them and the government and we asked it what they want easier for us to, to work with it if we can uh, register it here. But we know that there are other problems, uh, mainly the, the production of ibogaine. Uh, it's not interesting to register it uh, and don't have it uh, available for treatment. There's, a, there's not a lot of ibogaine in the world and there's not a lot of people producing ibogaine and in Gabon and, and Cameroon. Mm -hmm. There are not a lot of of uh, bushes of the Tabernetti bogus plant. It's a uh, uh, plant that is disappearing, and I think that all the, the community uh, must uh, be aware of that and plan how to 
to work on that because mm-hmm. uh, it can cause a strange situation that we can be the med- we can have the medicine regulated in some country, but simply we we will not be able to buy the, the medication because right. the laboratories are not producing it. it would it be anyway, possible to begin growing it in Brazil if it was registered as a medicine? Because I think the climates yes. would be similar, yeah? yeah? Yes, the climate is is very similar and the, the soil, the, the, the ground, uh, is very similar too. And probably a lot of million years ago, Brazil, the Bahia, uh, it's a state of Brazil, but here was uh, really uh, near uh, Gabão mm. because there was a continent a, called Pangea and the, it was separated. But it's the same climate, it's the same uh, type of, of ground, of soil, and we, th- uh, we think that, yes, it would be, be possible to grow Iboga here, uh, but uh, I think that it must be registered first um, before trying to have a, a plantation here because the the agriculture ministry they here they don't like uh, they, they they don't like much things uh, that come from Africa. We Brazil have uh, some uh, problems with uh, th- uh, animals and plants that came from Africa. One, the most problem mm-hmm. are, are the bees, the African bees, that they were brought to Brazil uh, in, the, uh, in the past, uh, four or five uh, centuries ago, and they are very aggressive and they, <clears throat> they grow uh, uh, a lot of, of, of individuals, uh, millions of individuals here because uh, there are not the natural, the natural competitive, uh, the other animals, and and the Ministry of Agriculture they are a little, let's say, traumatized by this, and they ask everything that comes t- uh, from Africa. They ask to for us to to be careful about it and to see exactly how it happens. So I think we are not uh, close to having a, a plantation of. Uh, to grow Tabernanti Boga here, uh, I think that we are. Uh, it will take some some years from from mm. now, and I think that maybe it will not be necessary because I'm, there is uh, there are people studying ways to shift the the production of boga to uh, to understand better how the plant works and how uh, it produces the ibogaine and to, to really to uh, upgrade the, the production without the need of have more, uh, more ground uh, planted. I don't know if I'm uh, making myself understandable. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. I think yep. that, that there are people that by the new, new technology, technologists, uh, they will achieve the goal that to, to produce more with the same plantation area. I mm-hmm. think that, that will happen in the future. I hope so, but it, it sounds like demand could expand very quickly. And if I understand correctly, the plant takes maybe five years before it's ready. So the the supply, may, there may be a point, like you mentioned, where demand really exceeds supply for a while. Yes, it, it's a, a problem because it's true. The, the plant uh, it needs five, six, seven years to start producing ibogaine, and uh, and uh, the oldest the plant, the, the better the, the ibogaine it produces. Uh, so we, we're really in a, in a situation that uh, there's no no hurry, let's say, to to legalize it and to spread its use all over the world because there will not be medicine for everybody. I think that we can go step by step, at the same time making the governments understand that it's a useful thing and the, the governments don't need to be afraid of that because uh, ibogaine is not really a recreational drug. That's no no need to fear that people will take ibogaine and go to, to parties and and to raves because it will not happen. And on the other side, uh, understand how the plant works, how it produces ibogaine, and uh, uh, try to to have uh, new ways to do it, uh, to, to make it produce more and, or to manage better the, the plantations. 
and the things must go uh, in a parallel way. Um, if it, and I think that what I do here is uh, because uh, uh, my my role in the, the treatment is to take care of the patient uh, during the time that uh, the patient is under the effect of ibogaine. And I, I, be, I stay around the patient and helping him, uh, guiding him and helping and uh, advising him about what is happening and helping to monitorize him. Mm-hmm. And so I think at this moment, uh, when the patient is under the effect of Ibogaine, I don't think that a psychiatrist is the most needed professional there. I think the most needed professional there is really uh, someone who who understands about ibogaine and um, like a, a, a prov- experienced provider or a, a medical doctor uh, to to uh, to let me say uh, to provide uh, an environment uh, a safe environment to the patient to, to take ibogaine. Uh, so I think that I'm the, uh, the right place because I am a experienced clinician. I have uh, experience with intensive care patients, so I think that my my background allows me to 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 do ibogaine treatments with uh, security. And we have in all these years, we have never had a, a complication, even minor complications. We never uh, had. I'm I'm satisfied what uh, about what we are doing here. Mm. Okay, and uh, how do you find clients? Uh, uh, the, the clients they 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 look for us because the what we call here in Brazil the the mouth to to mouth um, uh, marketing. The people mm. that were treated they they talk at home with their parents and their friends, and they have always a friend that is using two, and the friend. It's always the same story. The, the friend stays astonished with the, the reaction of his friend. He, they say, "Wow, how can you be so so good after a week? A week ago you were destroyed, and now you are so good. What happened?" And the people say, "Oh, I took ibogaine," oh, and then they they refer the, the patient to us. So we, we our the, the Anvisa, our FDA, don't allow us to to make. Uh, to, to advertise about ibogaine mm-hmm. or to make a, a marketing. We don't even have a, a site. We can't do any kind of marketing, marketing or advi- uh, advertisement. Uh, we work by mouth-to-mouth uh, marketing. Okay. And uh, where do you, is there a similarity to most of the people who come to you? Sorry? 